the different things that I'm doing. Um, if you don't like it, I, I also send out uh, personal growth essays every week. People generally like them. If you don't like them, you can unsubscribe. And also now you can text. This is a new thing, so I hope at least one person does it so I can see if it works. <laughs> you can text clearly Christina to 22828. You should know my name with that way. So that's that. And then the library's um, mailing if, list. If we're already on the mailing list. Yeah. On my mailing list? Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, how many people are already on my mailing list? Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, my emails are not that annoying. I mean, they're terribly, I need to, like, do a makeover on them, but I send you, like, interesting things, I think. So, this book actually is the essays that I was talking about. Um, every week I send out an essay, and I've written probably about 150 of them at this point. And so the first five years, 131 of them are actually compiled in this book, which is available at the New York Public Library. Or you can purchase it today for 20 bucks, or you can get it on Amazon. So that is that. Some information up there, you should have some information on your um, seats. And I know you just got settled in, um, but those of you who have seen me speak before, you know what I'm gonna do right now. <laughs> Oh, and we're being um, filmed on Facebook, so hi, Facebook. Say hi. Um, okay, so, all right. So everybody stand up, and I know you just got comfortable, so but please stand up. Okay. So, everybody close your eyes. All right, and let's just take some deep breaths. <sighs> okay, so big inhale. Expand your belly and your lungs, and uh, just let the day go. title is, your title at work, your title as a mother, husband, wife, sister, friend, brother, leave that all outside the room. Just take some more breaths. Let's put that to the shoulders and the neck. Get comfortable. Just get settled and calm. Yourself. Feel, start to feel your feet on the ground. take from my talk tonight is to remember to breathe. Okay, <laughs> because you see that didn't require a lot of effort, didn't require a lot of time, and you should have noticed the difference before and after. So, you know, we're really running around. We live in a, a very busy time, a, a crazy city, and it's important to just take time throughout the day to check in with yourself, to take a few breaths. about today is um, authentic branding. So in order for you to know what your authentic brand is, you have to know who you are. You have to know what you think. You have to know what you feel. And so by constantly checking in with yourself like that with your breath, that means you're constantly reconnecting with yourself. So it's really important to do that. And it's also important, I also like to recommend in the morning, when you, the first thing that you do when you wake up, take 15 minutes if you can. 15, if you can't do 15, do five. Again, start the day with a couple of breaths. You can have a cup of coffee or your cup of tea. Maybe listen to some nice calm music. If you have a mantra or a prayer, you want to do some journaling. It's just, you want to set a foundation for the day so that you're in control of your time and your energy and that you're not being pulled in five million different directions. Right? And so, you know, if you can establish that as a habit, just as much as you brush your teeth before you walk out the door, that will really help. And if you can 
you can do it when you come home, that's even better, right? So it's like anchor of the day. So you have 15 minutes in the morning that sets the foundation because it's fresh, it's a new day. And so when you come home, I personally like to lay flat on my back with my knees up or my knees sort of up against a chair or a sofa. And then that's about like letting the day go, right? So it's taking another five, 15 minutes to just, uh, just relax, process what happened, just reconnect with yourself again. So when you're transitioning from your day into your evening, and again, that could be a time when some ideas and inspiration of problems that you're working on is solved, but just, you know, connect to yourself inside. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, which by the way, let me just double check. I hope you've read the description. Is anyone here thinking this is like about business branding, like corporate branding? <laughs> no. Okay, good. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about kind of like who you are, right? And, and, and how you bring yourself to the world and how you want to be perceived. So, um, so first of all, I just want to congratulate all of you for being here because you can be doing a gazillion other things tonight. <laughs> okay. It's, and it's a Thursday night. You can be at happy hour. I don't know what, what else you want to be doing tonight, but so, you know, but you've taken the time to really come here and to like work on well, what is going on with me? Who am I? And how do I, um, allow myself to be the best version of myself because that's going to affect every area of my life. So awesome. Glad that you're here. And so we're actually a pretty small group. Um, I speak here every couple months. Um, the last one was actually a hundred people. So this room was full, the other room was overflowing, it was a little crazy, but this is a, a nice small group. So we can be a little interactive, okay? So I'm here to help you with whatever you guys need and we can do that a little bit more tonight. Um, and, but, but really I want you to be interactive with yourself, okay? And what do I mean by that? Nobody's in your head, nobody's you know, listening to your thoughts, right? No one's feeling your feelings. So, so I want you to see how you're responding to some of the things that, that, that I'm talking about. You know, how is it resonating with you? Be honest with yourself. That's what you're here for. And see, you know, what changes need to be made. So, you know, we're living in this really extraordinary time, which I will keep harming back to because this little device thing and everything that you can access from it has drastically changed who we are as people, how we live, our politics, our economy, everything. So I think it's, and it's also, I think, confusing our identity, right? It's confusing who we are because all we do is see who other people are, right? You see who other people are and what they're presenting and what they're sharing and, and all of that. And, and some of that may or may not be authentic, right? But we forget we can be fooled and and then start comparing and, you know, social media is, is uh, you know, like everything is a blessing and a curse. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but yeah, so, so, and we'll just, I just sort of talk about things in, in a kind of meandering way. Um, so hopefully that, that, that you will follow. If you don't, if you have a question, just raise your hand. So, so yeah, so, I mean, I think that, you know, Thinking about who you are, you know, when you when you align yourself with who you're, you are, life gets a lot easier. It takes a lot of energy to be something that you're not, right? And we have um, such, we have so many influences that are dictating or influencing or telling us who we are or who we should be from a very young age, right? So. <laughs> What, you know, comes from obviously our family, right? So and within our family, our, our race, our religion, our cultural group, where we live in the United States, our gender, our sexuality, our, um, our peer groups, right? So there's all these different things that have influenced who we are. And, you know, sometimes they're true who we are and sometimes they're not, you know, because when you actually take the time to be with yourself, you start to realize, hey, wait a second, I've been doing, you know, X, Y, Z, I go to football games every Sunday, but I don't really like football, <laughs> right? But you've been doing it just because your friends are doing it, 
or because that was the thing to do, or you know, or um, you know, a lot of times, how many people here are in career training? <coughs> About half, yeah, I know the job search central. So, you know, a lot of times you end up in careers because someone told you you should do that, you know, or your parents, you know, expected you to do something, or um, that's what everybody else was doing, or that was the only opportunity at the time. So, but that's not really who you are. So this is a good opportunity for you to like do a refresh on your life and who you are and your identity. Just that, <laughs> just that. Um, but this is an opportunity then you can sort of make tweaks and adjustments because when you do it, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go through, you know, you, you become more strategic about how you want to live your life and what you want to create for yourself and the type of work that you want to do and the type of relationships that you want to have. And it also even affects your health, right? So, you know, because again, remember that when you're aligned with who you are, it creates a sense of peace, a sense of ease, right? Which means no stress, right? I mean, there's always going to be stress, right? Life is stressful. But it's how you interact, navigate, respond to that stress. So the more connected to yourself, the more in touch with yourself, the more that you can know who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, your passions, your all these things, give yourself a break. Oh, then you know what? I'm not like having migraine headaches, right? I'm not having ulcers. I'm not, uh, my skin's not breaking out. Right? So it can affect you on the deepest of levels. So again, I'm so glad you guys are here. And, and part of this, and a, a lot of this really also has to do with, and I work with, I, I, you know, I'm a coach and I work with hundreds of people, and a lot of what I help people realize is, well, first of all, I help people get out of their heads, right? Because we live in this very left brain uh, logical world, and I help them get into their bodies and their hearts and their feelings and become more integrated whole people. Um, which we'll probably talk about as well. But it's, it's also about when, when you start to really discover or uncover or peel back the layers or start expressing who you are, it's about accepting that, right? Acceptance, self-love, owning who you are, being compassionate with yourself. And this is, this, is, this is an epidemic in our society, right? Because again, think about it, if you can't be loving and compassionate and accepting of yourself, how are we gonna to expect to do that with our neighbor, right? Or with somebody that we don't know? So it's really crucial. I'm, I'm really on a mission. If you look at my Instagram, I wrote a whole thing about this yesterday because um, that's really what's gonna, you know, look, we can change all the laws in the world, but you really have to change your heart, right? For things to really be profoundly revolutionary. And so no one can do that but you, right? That's your own individual responsibility. So when I do my talk, um, who are you, what are you supposed to be doing with your life, which by the way is on Facebook, on the page, the, the, science, the civil page, you can watch that. But I talk about, you know, it's each one of our responsibility to create peace because we all have our sphere of influence, right? And what do I mean by that? Do you ever hear the saying, happy wife, happy life? Okay. Or think about when, you know, you're at your job or something and someone's, you know, in like a really bad mood. Okay. And think about how that kind of paints the room, right? <laughs> I see some heads shaking and laughing. And, but think about conversely, right? When someone's like zippity doo da, right? And they're happy and they're in love or they just came back from vacation, like that also changes the energy of the room. So we're much more powerful than we think we are and we're contagious beings, right? Hopefully not with the flu, like I said last time, but, um, but you know, we're, we're much more sensitive beings than we let on, we lead on, we let, lead ourselves to believe, again, because we're so left brain dominant dominated in this, in this world and what we value. But we're really sensitive beings and so emotions are contagious, right? How we feel about us is contagious. It's subconscious, people pick up on that, right? So um, you really, you know, it's, it's really up to each 
person to take the responsibility to create peace in their own lives. And my personal opinion is that it's going to take personal transformation in order to create social transformation. So if everyone takes responsibility to make themselves as integrated, as whole, as complete, as at peace with themselves, as is in harmony with their life as they possibly can be, and again, life is not easy, right? Life is a challenge, a struggle, there's always going to be stresses, but again, if you can maintain as much uh, again, peace and ease and flow within yourself and with your own life, that is like, you know, it's like the little ripple thing, right? You the, the, the pebble that drops and the concentric rings that go out. Like, that affects everybody, whether you realize it or not. Think about it. If everybody did that, if everyone took care of themselves like that, think about how more pleasant your subway ride would be. <laughs> right? Think about how much, you know, less divorce, less crime. Right? So that's why it's so important. Um, you know, and I'll give you other sort of reasons, but but it's it's in, in the biggest picture of things. This is why it's so important, and especially now because of the crazy time that we're living in between politics and all the crazy stuff there, and because of digital, our digital life and social media is messing with us. So, um, so yeah. So, and I always like to talk about when I give this talk. I like to give the example of um, like Chaz Bono or Caitlyn Jenner, okay? So talking about having to really do the work, to take the time to know who you are, and then have the courage to express that, right? So do we all know who Chaz Bono mm -hmm. used to be Chastity Bono, and Caitlyn Jenner used to be Bruce Jenner? Or yes, however you want to, I don't know what the social connection is there. So, um, and you know, but I, when Caitlyn Jenner sort of came out and started to make her transition, I thought, oh, that was the whole point of the Kardashians. Like, that's why, right? <laughs> because, yes, Bruce Jenner, certainly Olympic athlete, you know, famous on his, in his own right, but certainly, like, like, eons of people didn't probably know who he was, except for that he was, you know, the father of Kylie and but you know what I'm talking about. So, um, so for so for so for a person of that um, uh, level of recognition to be able to make that transformation, right, on the world stage, like like I always you know think about that. If you're scared, I mean, it takes courage to be who you are, right? But think of those examples as like that's about as extreme as you can get. Right about really having the courage to be who you are. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, um, da, 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 so, and yeah, and we're getting into we're getting closer to spring. We're not quite there, but you know, obviously, this is a good time to think about rebirth. Right. Things are starting. You know, life is starting to come back. So again, this is a good time to think about doing these the, this work on yourself. Um. So yeah, so like I was saying, we're living in these extraordinary times. There's just an immense amount of change. And like I talk about in all my job search um, talks, you know, there's no such thing as security. There's no such thing as security anymore, right? When I did my, my Who Are You talk 10, 15, 16 years ago, first time, people were like, oh, I need security. And so if you guys can tell me in 2018 what job industry is secure, I'd like to know, right? <laughs> Banking, publishing, education, hospitals, right? Things that you would think, you know, are secure jobs. It's just, we're just living in these very, very um, transformative times. Things are just changing. And so if anybody tells you they know what's going on, they're lying to you. So to me, you know, the best way that you can navigate all of this is be secure in yourself. Right? If you're secure in yourself, then it's like surfing, right? You can navigate all the chaos and the change. And you can adapt, right? Because you know yourself well. And then you can recognize opportunities as they come up because there's opportunities that don't even exist today that might exist six months now. You see how quickly things are happening, right? With different companies popping up 
all the time, different technologies, and that leads to to whole other worlds, right? And then you could be the right person or the right time for those things. Did you have a question about that? Yeah, um, this is my first time coming here, and you, you said something that kind of uh, resonated with me, is just knowing yourself and being secure. This sounds pretty big. Can you, how do you know yourself? How do you question? know what you want? Excellent question. Thank you for asking. We're going to get to that. And that's, that's what you're here. So, so okay, so let's, we can start talking about that. That is fine. I think that, um, you know, one, one way that you can get to know yourself is, well, first of all, pretend that there's somebody that you just met and you want to get to know them. How do you get to know them? Ask questions. What else? Something in common, okay. You watch what they do. Watch what they do. Listen. Time. Listen. Spend time with Spend them. Spend time with them. So, so just so think about like if you were meeting yourself, if you were you know put yourself in, in you know, or if you were a, a person that you didn't know, how would you get to know them? So I always like to say, date yourself. Right? <laughs> date yourself. So you want to spend quality time with yourself. So you have to remember that dating yourself and spending quality time with yourself does not mean binge watching Game of Thrones or Real Housewives and drinking bottles of wine with yourself, okay? <laughs> that's, you know, we all need to do that once in a while, fine. But that's not quality time with yourself. So, um, so and what does that look like? Well, I don't know if you were here right at the very beginning, but I was talking about every morning, just five, 10, 15 minutes, spend that time with yourself. When you come home, again, process, spend that time with yourself. If you don't have a journal, okay, I don't have a sample of a journal. And a journal does not mean this on a laptop, okay? A journal is a notebook or whatever with a pen, and you write with your hand, okay? So your journal is like if you're conversing with someone, your journal becomes like your best friend. And you start processing, this is what I think, this is what I feel. This is what's going on with me. Huh. And you start noticing, you observe things, you ask yourself questions, right? And this is the work that I do with people. You can hire someone like me and I can help dig around and, and become a mirror for you and help show you some things, you know, who you are. Um, you can, um, Spend time in nature, okay? Nature is a great tool because guess what? <laughs> nature just is, right? So when you get into nature, and you know, we live in a concrete jungle here, so you have to really make an effort to do that. So it's spending time with yourself with, in nature and just being, right? And just the energy of like the trees and the animals and the birds, like they're not trying to be something that they're not, right? They just are. So it's like it's aligning yourself with the energy. Now you're a young person, and so I don't think that you know a life that's not digital. So, so, so what the digital world has done is taken us outside of ourselves. <coughs> so every time you're on this thing, you're not in your body, right? You're not really in your self. You're not in your mind. You're not in your own thoughts. You're you're outside. You're watching. You're being passive. I mean, maybe you're interacting. But I would say most people probably are just voyeurs, right? They're just passively reading, observing, seeing what's going on. And so how, well, how is that giving you information about yourself, right? How are you, the other thing that I talk about is that your time and your energy is your most precious resource. So how are you using your time and your energy? So what happens a lot, and it's what's, you know, what's dangerous about this thing, this is, these are how my talks go, they're gonna go all over the place. But hopefully this is information that is helpful to you. Um, so what happens is that this can be as addicting as crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this, is, this is a powerful device and it's deceptive and misleading. Okay, it can also be a very powerful tool for good. Okay, so it just depends on how you use it and you have to be in control of it. You can't let it control, control you. So what do I mean by that? So what generally happens with people, I find, my observation, work with people, is that most people walk around emotionally constipated. 
What does that mean? <laughs> no one likes to feel their feelings, okay? Nobody likes to feel their feelings. So we walk around with all this repressed anger, shame, frustration, uh, resentment. You know, I'm saying the negative ones because we especially don't want to feel the negative feelings, right? But guess what? As Brene Brown says, you guys know the work of Brene Brown? Who's great, Brene Brown? Um, now you guys should all know about her. Um, she was like one of the best, the, the top um, TED Talks of all time. A bunch of books. So um, if you, so you, we have all these like negative emotions that we don't want to feel. So what do we do? We numb them. We distract ourselves. So everyone's got their poison. Everyone's got their drug. So some people have hardcore drugs, right? And hence, that's part of the opioid epidemic. You know, we got marijuana, we got alcohol, we've got food, right? We've got work, workaholics. These are all real things. And we've got the crack cocaine of the little, you know, hits of when we get little notifications, right? Or we just get lost down some rabbit hole on some website or someone's page or whatever, and we're stalking our ex-boyfriends or looking at you know someone that we knew from high school or whatever we're doing. Like these are just distracting us and taking us away from being with ourselves. Ah, somebody just texted me now. Hello. Okay, so again, you know, so. So, and then and then also when we're sort of observing and looking at other people, we're then making these crazy comparisons. And then we start to feel bad about ourselves, right? So you have to remember not everyone's posting their bathroom floor moments, right? And their breakdowns. And everything's framed and lighting and this and that. So and so and there's there's also a saying that I think Ken Burns had, which is a great and I think he said that virtual reality, let's see if I can find it, virtual reality is to uh, reality as reality television is to reality. <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? Okay, thank you. <laughs> right? So virtual reality is to reality what reality television is to reality. So, you know, you got to take all this stuff with a grain of salt. So, um, Anyway, so, so my point about the emotional stuff is that, so if we're numbing and distracting ourselves from feeling the bad stuff, that means we can't feel the good stuff either. Right, we can't feel the good stuff either. And the good stuff, joy, love, passion, compassion, uh, excitement, freedom, the good stuff we can't feel either. So, you know, people, we're like a, an emotion phobic society in my opinion so you know and this is also why we have um what i call emotional porn and i think i might have gotten that from Brittany brown um but you know and, and everything's trying to this is everything i'm like really you know that expression or um everyone's shouting at each other everything's making everything so extreme right it's to get your attention it's to get through you it's to get you to feel something because we're so sort of Stopped up. So, um, so yeah. So, when you start allowing yourself to feel your feelings, then you get information about yourself. Then you're like, oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. Right? It's a feeling that you get. But if you can't feel your feelings, you don't know what you like and what you don't like because you can't feel your feelings. Does that make sense? Right? And if you are just listening to what everybody else thinks, you don't know what you think. You're just taking in other people's information and opinions. And that's also super dangerous, and I think got us into the place that we're in now. People are just like absorbing. Media is really powerful. So think of your yourself as like an antenna, right? You're, what are you transmitting, and what are you receiving? Especially what you're receiving. I, I wrote an essay about this. You can Google called Radiohead. Okay, think about it. It's like a diet, right? If you're just eating McDonald's all day long, that's not good for you, right? So you gotta like pay attention to what you're letting into your brain space, your consciousness. What are you feeding your mind? And also what are you contributing to the space? Right? Are you putting positive thoughts, feelings, images, 
comments, right? Or are you being sort of nasty and sarcastic? Like, we're more powerful than we think. Remember I said, or our emotions, we're contagious people. So we all influence each other. So mind yourself. Take responsibility for what it is that you're letting in and giving out. Um, does, does, does that help answer your question? Did I answer your question? Does that help? Yeah. Okay, does anybody, if anybody else has anything to add to that? Or I mean, there's more stuff to add, I'm sure. It's, yeah. You, you talk a lot about social media, and I've seen the TED Talk. They talk about how addicting it is, and I agree with you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment, um, not to defend both of you, but it didn't start out that way. Uh, MySpace, things like that, was a, a natural place where you could go and express yourself and, 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 and show the world, you know, in a digital way, mm -hmm. express yourself. Um, and then companies like Facebook and different people decided that it's better to just monetize it and make a lot of money by selling all the information to ad, ads. Um, but my point is, is that uh, I, I agree with you in terms of social media being extremely addictive. I, I took off of Facebook years ago, and I just I haven't gotten back on it. Um, it it's, there could certainly be a tool, though. It's it is a tool. I mean, like I like that's what I'm saying. Like there's it's it's a tool. So a tool, a hammer can like smash someone's head in, or it can build a house. Like how are you using a tool, right? So. I mean, for me, it was really interesting, you know, when I sort of, you know, I was on Facebook for a while, but you know, I was one of the people that didn't do anything on Facebook. I would just sort of like, you know, watch and see what was going on, but I, I didn't do anything on it. But actually, I used it for me to help uh, make myself more confident and express myself. You know, I decided to, I, you know, I, I had self-image, you know, things, and I had pictures of myself and all this kind of thing, and so in order, to help develop myself, I use Facebook to, to put pictures of myself out, to start expressing myself, you know? And the more I did it, I was like, oh, actually, I kind of like this for that, you know? And I actually, so it's, it's to me, it's a, it's, a, it's, even my Instagram or whatever, you know, I like my creative, pick my artsy pictures, you know, the photos, and, you know, I write, and, you know, when a lot of things were happening in 2016, I actually like found a voice that I didn't know I had about, you know, expressing myself about certain things that were going on and, and really being conscious. And I was very conscious about that time, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, 2016, mm -hmm. how crazy Facebook was, right? Mm -hmm. And you start seeing who people are. The World Series. It was, it was intense, right? But like, it, but so it, it, it was, hard, but we don't really have a corner bar that everyone goes to every night anymore, right? You don't have a, where else are you going to have a, a, a public discourse? So I was very uh, conscious about contributing to discussions, especially with people of opposing views, and to try to model a way that you can engage with people. So a bit, it was, I was very conscious about my views, and continue to be very conscious about my views. So if you're conscious about it, great, it's a tool. I mean, certainly as a, as a business person, you know, I got to do all this, right? <laughs> so make sure you follow, like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, because actually it is a great way to communicate with people. You know, let people know what's going on. So, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's a, it could be a slippery slope. And everything that I'm talking about is like, as long as you are conscious about it, as long as you know why you're doing something. As long as you know you are being strategic about something, as long as you are expressing yourself in an authentic way, it's all good. But a lot of people walk around like zombies and half asleep and just paying attention to whatever's in their face and getting you know drawn in five million different directions and you don't even know, know what you're doing. Right? So um, so yeah, so I know I'm jumping a little bit all over the place. Okay, so, um, and, and yeah, so and people, and these days, people are really craving authenticity, right? Especially, I think we're maybe hopefully, hopefully we've reached the tipping point in the whole selfie Kardashian culture. Um, <laughs> you know, um, because think about, I just, I don't know if you guys saw, just the other night, I, I, I just came to my, did you see Jennifer Lawrence on Stephen Colbert the other night? Like the thing, what's, how many people liked Jennifer Lawrence? 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> but you know, she's she's an appealing person, I think, because she seems sort of down to earth and relatable and all that kind of stuff. So she was she was on Stephen Colbert and she was like just took her shoes off and was like hanging out and they started drinking and it got a little crazy, but it was you know, it kind of is a breath of fresh air when people are not so so uh, uh, calculated or you know, um, the people just themselves. And he is refreshing and, and so think about Think about people in your own life, or think about maybe other celebrities that you really like, and think about what is it that you like about them? Like, what is the appeal? Is it the person that you know as a celebrity? And my guess is that two things, which are connected. One is that they're just super authentic. Like, they're just, they don't care what other people think, right? They're just themselves, like whatever that is. They're comfortable in their own skin, and they just are who they are. Generally, that, those are the people that we're attracted to. And the other thing is that they take care of themselves, right? They love themselves. So, you know, especially like think about the concept of beauty. Most people, if you, think, if you really think about the people that you consider beautiful, probably not necessarily traditionally beautiful necessarily, but they're people that, again, are comfortable in their own skin and who take care of themselves, who love themselves. Right? And, and treat themselves in a way that just they're allowed to radiate all of who they are. But they might not be necessarily, you know, gold cover model material. So just, so just think about that. So now, um, so another um, little exercise actually that I want you to do, not another, but an exercise that I think is a good thing for you guys to do. Of course, we'll talk about. The word brand, right, just breaking down the title of, of authentic branding, the word brand, you know, initially meant like the stamp on cattle, right, to distinguish one uh, rancher's cattle from another. But the word brand has really evolved into something else. What does it evolve? What would you say it has evolved into? Your image. Your image or the perception, right? Right, your image, your, but it's really what people perceive you to be. So that's sort of what branding is, right? And then, and that can be good or bad, right? But the word authentic, right? Hey. God bless you. Is um, you know has to do with being authentic, trust. You know, it has to do with being trustworthy or genuine, right, or real. So, um, so most. People, I would say, you would like to align those things, right? You would like to, you know, that your real self is also the perception that people have of you, right? So we're gonna do a little exercise. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to write down three adjectives, three adjectives that you would use to describe yourself. So the first thing, like when you're thinking about yourself, what are three three adjectives that you would use to describe yourself? First, and don't think about it too much, just the first three that come to you, that come to you. Three adjectives that you would describe yourself. Again, don't, don't think about it too much. Take that long, you know, you should just have whatever three. Okay, now what I want you to do is think about people in your life, people that you work with, family, anybody like that. And I want you to write down three adjectives that you think they would use to describe you. Three adjectives that people at work or your family, friends, what adjectives do you think they would use to describe you? First three that come. So, how many people have three match the other three? All, all six match. I just want to put that on the record, Facebook. Not one person raised their hand, okay? Where, where the adjective that you use to describe yourself 
They're the same adjectives that you think other people would use to describe you. Okay, and congratulations, that's why you're all here. So that's great. So, um, how many people got two matches? How many people got at least one matching? Two more. So yeah. Okay. So here's where you see there's some work to be done, right? Who wants to share? Who wants to share? Yeah. Uh, for myself, I put hardworking, charismatic, loyal. Okay. And for a family member to describe myself, I put, you know, it's a synonymous. So persistent, loyal, funny. Okay. So wait, say them again. The first one was. Hardworking, charismatic, loyal. Okay. And then put persistent, loyal, funny. Okay, so loyal matches, right? Mm -hmm. To loyal. And hardworking and persistent. Similar, but similar. A little and bit loyal. different. And you said charismatic and they say funny? Um, yeah. Okay, so how do you feel about how do you feel about the way they resonate? Well similar, but you know, they're gonna describe me in a different way. But and you we, said have to have them describe you. And so would you like to be would you like for them to perceive you more the way you see yourself? Um, I'm comfortable with that description either way. Okay. You said have them describe you, so I'm, you know, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with it. Perhaps they would use some other words too, but, you know, that, okay. that's fine. Okay. And have you ever thought about that before? Is that is that a revelation to you or is that comforting to you? Or? I haven't had time to think about it, frankly, in the last little while. Okay. So and how do you feel about it now that you sort of recognize that? I'm fine with it. Good living with it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to share? Come on, people. Let me hear that. Who is it? Thank you. Yeah. Um, for, the, for what I said about myself, I put confident, keen, and ambitious. Mm hmm And for the one that described me, I put confident, adventurous, and loving. What was the second one? Confident, caring, adventurous, and loving. Confident. So confident is the same, right? Yeah. And yeah. adventurous and loving is how people perceive you. And you want to you you said the keen and what was the other one? Ambitious. And ambitious. Okay. So <laughs> how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Um I think I was looking at more like it individually looking at myself and then looking at the uh, I was not really thinking it like that way, but uh, I felt like you know, like. Do you feel like a loving and caring person? Yeah. Okay. So that's good. And do you want to be seen as more hardworking, more what you say, ambitious and keen? Do you care about that? Um. Yeah. You do care about that. Okay. But I think I was thinking of that. That's okay. That's okay. This is just to like get the wheel spinning. To get you to think about yourself and think about how you operate in the world and think about you know how you might interact with people and how they might perceive you that's all and so if you see something i don't know if anybody wants to share a bigger discrepancy that you'd like to really change you know then that is gives you information in terms of what you might want to work on so yeah <clears throat> excuse me i think it's great that we think of how we would like to see ourselves and what others might perceive us as being. But sometimes we don't have the ability to control how others see us because they form their own opinions. Um, and sometimes we as an individual have to mold into that perception of what we think that they want to be, like if we go for a job. I might go for a very high powered position and in my free time, I'm not that high power mentality. So how do you balance those two personas? Exactly. That is the million dollar question. And that is a question that only you can, in, you can answer that for yourself, right? And this obviously comes into play generally in a, in a work setting, right? Is you have to decide, like, am I okay with like the split Persona. Like, am I going to be one way at work and one way at home? I personally could never do that, personally. But you have to decide for yourself. You know, um, it's, and like I said, I think at the beginning, it's just, it's so much easier to just have both match. <laughs> you know, it just takes so much energy 
to try to portray something that you're really not. I mean, when I, I, I taught for NYU many, many, many years ago, and I just got basically handed a job to teach a, a, a required course for a bachelor's degree at, at NYU. And I was young and had only a bachelor's degree myself. And I was like, what, what, I gotta take, you know? And I was very intimidated by it. And, and you know, like had all these preconceived notions of what I thought a professor would be. Well, you know, I was really a professor, but she's like, no, you're a professor. And that kind of messed with me. And it was very awkward. It was very awkward to try to like, portray this image that I thought I was supposed to be, right? And I, after a while, it just it was just annoying and, and just wasn't working. And I just said, you know, forget it, I'm just gonna be me. And then all of a sudden, everything changes. That's what people try to respond to. So, um, look, it's not, you know, it's not always 100% possible to, to, to be exactly who you are at home and at work, but if you can get 80-20, I don't know about the 80-20, like if you can be 80% yourself at work and do whatever you need to do to, to function the, the rest of the time, that's good. That's good. And again, you know, it's just whatever you decide for yourself that you're comfortable with. And that's going to be different for every person. I mean, yeah, does anybody have any other examples about that or any other issues or scenarios that they've had? Yeah. I'll share the one that didn't happen. Okay. I'm accurate or perfectionist, one or the other. <coughs> Others perceive it as slow. Ah. Because I do that because of this, but it doesn't come across like that. So, so did you ever try to like explain yourself to people and when the issue comes I up? Try, but then they give me like, well, but you should be doing that, and then, you know, then I got like, like a something, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, that's just a negotiation between you and you, uh -huh. right? Maybe there is, something that you could just give yourself a break on, right? If it's the situation that keeps hindering, you know, your success. But also it's just, sometimes it's just about communication. It's just helping you sharpen your communication and explaining to someone like, you know, you, you sense that they're becoming impatient, but you can say, I know it seems like I'm really slow, but I'm just really trying to get it right. And they might not even realize it. But when you say it to them, this is what, this is what I'm talking about, like it's so, fundamental but subtle in terms of like when you know yourself then you're able to communicate and express yourself appropriately and effectively right and half of our problems are just miscommunication and assumptions and perception so if you're if you have your own self-awareness that makes you easier to have awareness about another person as well and so you can pick up on that you can pick up on what if, if they're perceiving something that you that you don't want them to perceive you can correct them <laughs> you know you can show them really who you are right yeah so i have a, a story like an anecdote that might help people um so in my last job um i was pulled aside by, by a manager and, and told that um i should change some aspect of my behavior my personality to for whatever reason and i accept my behavior so that I could excel at this job that we all lost. So at the end of the day, it really didn't ma it doesn't matter. Right. Just be yourself. I mean, right. Right. And you know and, and also, you know, we're gonna talk about that's that's a nice lead in to, to the why, you know, why you should just be yourself is partly because of job security, okay? Which I know is the antithesis of what a lot of people experience. But think about like if you're Chatty Cathy, right? If you're a people person, you love people, and if your job is like data entry by yourself all day long, that's like, that is draining, right? That is not the best use of who you are, and it's gonna create frustration and stress, right? So but if you know you're to be Chatty Cathy, you know, then get a job that matches that personality, right? You're a receptionist, you're, in hospitality, you're doing something that maximizes your aspects, your strengths, and your and who you are. And at the same time, uh, if you hate people, don't do sales. Okay, <laughs> you know, if you don't like talking or interacting with people, don't do sales. You know, and so a lot of times I talk about when I do my talk, um, 
uh, pink slips how losing your job is a good thing or staying motivated throughout the job search. You know, I always ask people, how many of you really wanted to be laid off secretly by your boss? Most people raise their hand, okay? Because you weren't meant to be in that job, right? You Somehow you ended up in that job because of all whatever external influence, right? Because you didn't listen to yourself and you ended up in this job that really doesn't fit you. And then guess what? You're miserable and or you're miserable for such a long time, but then you don't have the courage because we're humans and we're lazy and we're afraid of change and the unknown and all these things. So you, you suffer because the suffering is easier than the unknown and the effort that it would take to change until that day when the universe is like, yeah, no, it's time, right? It's going to kick you in the butt. You'll get laid off, fired, or whatever. And it, it's always going to come back to taking responsibility taking responsibility for your life. So I know people don't like to hear that you are responsible for your life, that you have the power, much more power than you think you do to create your life in the way that you want it to be. Um, that can be a bitter pill to swallow if you're like, oh my God, I'm responsible for all these horrible things that happened in my life. But the, the beautiful thing is that that means you have the power to change, right? You have a power you have the power to make the adjustments and to, to car chart a different course. So like, think of it like that, right? And again, because of you know, all this stuff, you know, we're, this is the last thing that all the people that are trying to sell us stuff want us to, to be, is have our own agency, right? They just want us to do whatever they tell us to do, right? And take all the money, you know? So, it's, it's so important. And so, and think about like when you do, and this is, this is the work that I do, when you align yourself, like I was saying in the beginning, this is a lot of the work that I do as a coach. When you figure out what those talents, skills, passions, abilities, your interests, all of those things, if you can maximize, make the most use of them, 80, 20, as much as you can. And if you can't do it in a day job, do it at least outside the job, get a day job that doesn't kill you so that you can do the stuff that you love outside. Okay, but when you do that, it's like, you know, it's a sense, it's like the, the seas part. And guess what? You can, that's your security because when those layoffs come, they'll do everything to keep you, right? Because you're the right person with the right personality and the right skill set and the right enthusiasm for that job. So that's how you protect yourself from losing a job. Now, you must still might lose it with all of that, and there could be other issues that. Maybe it's time for you to deal with relationships. Maybe it's time for you to deal with health. Maybe it's time for you to move to the city. There could be other reasons, right? But when you, you know, when you are just, you know, doing your thing, you know, it's going to be much easier to hold your job, hold your career. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? So, um, yeah, and. You know, and the same thing, it's like the introvert extrovert thing. I know, I, did you guys ever read the book um, uh, Quiet by Susan Cain? Yeah, it's good. If you're an introvert, you should read the book Quiet. Um, but you know, she talks about like this whole trend at one point um, for the whole open floor space scenario, right? Which is like for an introvert, that's really rough, right? You know, I'm, I believe it or not, actually, I'm an introvert. I know people don't believe it, but I am. I don't talk to anybody all day when I'm doing talks, so that I have the energy to, to give to you guys, but, but then, I, then I have to go home and, and recoup. But if you're um, an introvert that needs to focus and that needs sort of your own space that, that, that is drained by a lot of interaction, those open floor spaces and this whole team, 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 team thing, well, not everybody is cut out for team stuff. I'm one of them, okay? I'm not a team player. Who ever says that? <laughs> Right? You know, like, I, but I know myself. And every job that I've ever had, it's like I've had my own little, like, you know, kingdom. I say, you know, I'm just doing whatever I want in front of the room or, you know, my coaching practice or, you know, um, even when I was teaching, they didn't, they never even observed me. I made my own curriculum. So, um, you know, so it's, it's know yourself and then put yourself in positions, situations where you can flourish, not where you're limited or prohibited or stressed, right? And you know, this also, um, oh, you, know, you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary Vaynerchuk, 
um, Vey Marichok. Exactly. V A Y M E R C H U K. He's kind of this, this very, he's very much who he is. Very, he, he, he curses a lot from the platform and, and all of his videos and everything, but he's super sincere and he's super passionate. And, you know, and he'll, he'll talk a lot about this stuff as well. And, he, and he's done very, very well for himself by just being who he is. He's not a typical business person in any way, shape, or form. But he's been successful, right, in his own way, on his own terms. Right? And you've got to trust that. So, so part of what I was talking about before, about the accepting and owning and loving who you are, trusting that that's enough. Trusting that you'll be successful and, pros and prosperous just by being who you are. Trusting it. So, you know, if you guys haven't noticed, I don't use PowerPoint. I talk with hands a lot. I kind of ramble. I say a lot of likes, you knows, all that kind of stuff. And so as a speaker, I'm not really what a typical speaker is. But I kind of don't care because I've been doing it enough now that what I realize and why I can ignore some of that stuff is because I, what I have to say, I'm passionate about. and. It seems to resonate with people, and it seems to supersede all of the technical stuff that I'm really actually not very good at. So I'm aware of it, but I choose to proceed anyway. Knowing that people who are very left brain oriented people, who like a PowerPoint, who like bullet points, who like A to B to C to Z, they're not going to like me. And I got to be okay with that, because that's not who I am. There are other spheres that will suit that. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Just know yourself. And then you, you can set your own sort of expectation um, about things. And so, so this also, oh, so I was saying Gary Vayner. So he says, don't try to be a penguin if you're a giraffe. I like that saying. Don't try to be a penguin if you're a giraffe. Um, you know, bet on your strengths. Make the situation fit you. And so oh, this actually, this talk is a great example. So this talk came about because I'm a, I'm a coach for New York Women in Communication. And this is, they do this like, Night of the round table, the night of the coaches, like these round tables with the coaches every year. And this is like seven years or something, they asked me to do one of the tables. Now remember, this is New York Women in Communications, lovely organization, a, a, a prof a, a, an organization of professional women in communications. I'm a coach. And, and I've run a, a nonprofit, and so I, I do have some, some idea of branding in a sort of more traditional sense, but they asked me to run the branding table. And I thought, okay. <laughs> I'm like, why are they asking me out of this whole organization of women and other coaches who are more business coaches, they're asking me to do this. Now, instead of saying no, I don't do that, or, in say, or instead of saying, thinking to myself, yes, and I'll fake it, right? Because I could probably have faked it enough. I've written an organization. And I kind of you know, have some basic stuff that I could have done. I decided to play to my strengths, and I said, you know what, I don't really do branding, but here's what I can do. I can do authentic branding, letting the real you shine in any situation, and here we are today. <laughs> that I, you know, I created, and they're like, okay, great, and sure enough, I had two full house tables, and, and it was well received, et cetera, et cetera. Get it? It's a good example. Right? I could have said yeah, I could have said no off the bat, because I'm like, oh, I don't do branding, you know, very black and white, limited. Or I could have faked it or made the best of the situation. Or I could have just do what I you know, done what I do what I done what I do, whatever. Um, which is what I did. Um, another example, uh, which I think illustrates this as well, and I had a, a friend um, who was running this sort of social media organization for kids. And um, now, like I'm basically a technophobe, and this was maybe like five, four or five years ago, and I was even less on social media and all this kind of stuff. And he said, "Do you want to, you know, do you want to teach these ninth graders uh, social media?" And I'm like, "Why would I be the person to teach ninth graders?" Social teaching you, you know, and I teach adults generally, right? I taught uh, when oh, my first job out of school, I actually taught junior high and high school so I did have like a, a minute of experience with that and I guess I was kind of curious 
as to if I could work with kids again because I hadn't done it in such a long time and I trusted this person. I'm like, he's like, oh, don't worry. We have the whole curriculum mapped out. You just kind of have to show up and present it. I said, okay. Figuring, like, I don't really know. Like, I'm the worst. I'm the worst at social media. I don't know how to do anything, but I'll, okay, I'll try this. So sure enough, go into the classroom. I've eaten alive the first day. And these are ninth graders, like, in New York City public school. <laughs> and, you know, they ate me alive, and I was like, oh my god, I almost quit the first day. It was like a six, uh, a series of six classes. <coughs> but I went home that night, and on the news, it just so happened, that on the news, like right at that time, I don't know if you remember, there was a girl, like a teenager that like pranked Twitter, like a, a, a terrorist threat to American Airlines, and the FBI showed up at her house. This was a while ago. Mm. Like, it's serious stuff. And then there was another um, kid, this happened, I think, in Brooklyn on a bus or something, who who actually killed someone on the bus, and he did it because he was bullied. There was some mix-up, like the wrong person got killed, but there was some bullying going on, on on Facebook that led him to do this kind of a thing. And like literally, this was all happening right right when I was doing this. There was these two best friends, these two girls in Mexico, and one posted some like private stuff about the other one, and then one actually killed her. And I thought to myself that like, oh, because, and, and during that day, I, I, you know, I did a little poll and I said, how many, you know, what do you guys do after school, whatever. Like basically their whole lives were online. So I thought to myself, oh my God, this is literally about life and death for these kids. Like really, like literally about life and death. And I just thought, okay, well, I can't, this is not about teaching them how to use Facebook or Twitter. They could teach me that stuff, or they're not even off Facebook, right? But I thought I could teach them how to be good human beings, right? And how to not bully each other and how to, um, you know, I, I tried to teach them. It was kind of funny. I tried to ask them what the golden rule was, and I got crickets. So, you know, even to, like, give them the concept of what the golden rule was. You know, and I had some kids that were like, soaking it up, you know, and then I had the mean girls that were challenging me and they're asking me, well, can't I just put a topless picture of myself on there and to Justin Bieber? And I was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, like just so, so I'm teaching them just like basic things that just happen online, right? So anyway, to make a long story short, which I'm terrible at doing, at the end of like the third class, it was like, it was like a wrangling cat kind of day for this class. But there's this kid that comes up to me at the end of the class, quiet kid, and he's like, he's like, miss, he's like, I just want to let you know, he's like, I appreciate you, I appreciate you, I was like, oh my god, I was going to cry, I was like, oh, thank you, you know, and he said, he goes, no, he's like, I've been listening, I've listened to a lot of Bob Marley lately, he's oh, like, and he goes, no, he's, he's dead serious, I've listened to a lot of Bob Marley lately, he goes, and he's like, I, I really, I want to be a leader, he's like, I think I found my purpose today. And I was like, done. <laughs> done. Done with my life, right? You know, like, that's it. I found my purpose. So somehow the universe got me in a room with a kid that was searching for his purpose. And whatever I said, however I said it, which had nothing to do with social media, got through that kid. And even the teachers came up to me after. They're like, they're like that kid never talks to anybody. He doesn't even talk to anybody other teachers and he's really quiet and and so I said to him I said because oh then he also said to me he goes because these kids he's like they don't know and he's like they don't understand how important this is you know and I said then I said to him I go and he goes don't listen to me so I said I said good I said I'm gonna have you talk in the last class and you're gonna talk to the kid so you know of course it's like made my life made my day so I just didn't tell him what to say. Last day of class, I gave him 15 minutes, and he comes up, and all the kids are like, what is going up to the part of the class? And he gives a lecture about how they should pay attention to this stuff and be good to each other and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it was, I'm getting goosebumps by thinking about how beautiful it was. But it's just a perfect example of like, be who you are. I was not a social, I was, when I realized I'm really not here to teach them social media, I'm here to teach them what I know how to teach. And just did that. And that's what happened.
So, um, yeah. So, and this applies also with relationships. Those of you who have a little kid or whatever, you know, you're in a long-term relationship, that's not really happening. Right? So you want to, again, be able to be yourself. Because, you know, if you're going to be with someone, you want them to see who you are. You don't, you don't, you don't want to front, front your whole relationship. Right? So even when you're dating, you're getting to know someone, it's better to just be yourself right off the bat. Because you're actually going to end up with this person. You don't want to put on a facade the whole time you're with them. And again, with, in terms of communication, you know who you are, you know what you want, you know how to communicate effectively, you know how to express yourself, that's all going to help in any kind of relationship, whether it's a personal relationship, your family, your friends, co-workers, etc. And then like I said at the beginning also, oh, and by the way, you know the whole thing, you know, what, what, what is the most sort of sexy attribute to people? Confidence. 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 So what is, what is confidence? You know who you are, if you're comfortable in your own skin, if you love yourself, you accept yourself, like that's what confidence is. And you just be. So it's not this, and I have a little video um, on my website, you, on all my newsletters and my website, you can click on it, I have like a little spiel about confidence, but there's no secret. Just be who you are and be confident in that. Know what it is. I'm not thinking about it. That's confidence. So, um, and then what I was saying before too about health, right? Your health. So when you work against yourself, when you work against your own natural tendencies, whether it's thoughts, feelings, interest, how you use your time and energy, if you're working against yourself, that's gonna have a physical impact on your body. It's gonna have a physical And the longer and harder it goes, I mean, it's really gonna have a physical impact. You guys know the book, You Can Heal Your Life, by Louise Hay. That is a classic one. I recommend it to all my clients. So let me put that on the board. Um, really, are any of her stuff? Um, she's got lots of videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, how we think about ourselves, how we manage our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves, really affect our body. So if nothing else, we want to stay healthy. It's not just about what you eat physically. It's not just about exercise. Oh, and by the way, oh, a good exercise thing too. So when you know yourself, okay, I'll give another example for myself. I do some Zumba, right? I do something called Nia, which I call hippie dancing, which is very free. Um, and, but even with the Zumba, I just want to move my body. I love music. I love dancing. I don't always like what the teacher's doing. So I stand in the back out of the mirror as much as I can, and I just do my own thing sometimes. If I don't really dig what the teacher's doing, <laughs> I know some people are like, oh my God. Um, but it's my body, okay, I don't care. It's my body, I want my body to feel and move, I'm not like doing some performance, but you know, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just wanna move the way my body wants to move. That's what feels good to me. So, you know, I don't go totally off Thing. But you know, if they're doing this, I might do, you know, like this. You know, like I'll do my own thing. I'll have my own flourishes and whatever, but I'll stand in the back, I'll keep it. But that's that's crazy to some people. That's so like because you know how do most people do their exercise classes? Right? They're watching the teacher, they're not even in their bodies, they're so serious, right? It's not even fun, it's not even pleasurable. Like Dancing, exercise, all these things should be fun. So listen to your body. What does your body want to do? Again, make your life easier, people. Okay? Make it easier. Um, so, what's our time? Okay. So, I've got some of these great quotes up here. And first of all, any more comments, questions? Uh, yeah. This might be getting in the weeds a bit. You were just talking about physical exercise and all that. Have you ever had a client you've worked with that had some sort of physical ailment? Uh, mental ailment or perhaps neurological ailment that they've had to overcome and without you know maybe getting too specific can you share with us how they were able to do that physical mental neurological neurological or otherwise um the first thing that's coming to me is something that actually just happened to me two days ago all right so um so yeah so i worked with a client a couple months ago back in november 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this right, but I worked with him back in November, and he was the most disconnected person that I have ever worked with. So much so, and I've worked, I've been coaching for 10 years, okay, I have coached hundreds of people, and he was so disconnected, there's very few people that I think I can't reach, or I can't work with, or I can't help. Like, it, it almost never happens, I want to say. And I thought, oh my god, I don't know if I could, if I can, like, if this guy's got any hope of becoming, like, a human. Like, he seemed so, I didn't know if, like, if it was, like, an autistic thing, or if it was a sociopath thing. Like, I've never thought that about anyone before. He was just so disconnected. And, you know, and when I... I'm a, I'm a holistic career coach, so when I'm helping people, when I'm talking to them, I'm really looking at every aspect of your life, every aspect, and I'm just connecting the dots because it is all connected, right? So stuff that happened in your childhood or relationships or, you know, it's all connected. So I'm really, really looking at everything, and I know some stuff that happened in his childhood and things like that, and I'm like, okay, and just how he was and what kind of work he did. And, and so he could function in his job because it was it suited some of the personality that he had. And I thought, oh my god! And then he was driving me crazy. He didn't like respond to my emails. And I like there's very. I mean, I love my clients. I love what I do. And there's very few that um, I kind of don't like, you know, or like that I didn't think that I could help or I didn't want to try anymore. So anyway, so a bunch of time goes by. Like four months go by. I gave him all this homework to do as I do. One of my clients and I thought this guy's not going to do the work, and he, he asked me some questions. It was annoying, you know what I mean? I thought, oh. So, two days ago, I had the follow-up call with him, and I literally I got on the phone with him, and I almost didn't recognize him, and I actually got choked up because I I felt such a difference in him in terms of like being connected to himself. He did my homework. He did the homework that I asked him to do. Because he had given me, because I asked people to send me before we talk, well, what did you do? And he read, the, he read the book that I said. He did some of the journaling exercises. You know, he did the work that I asked him to do, and he sounded like a different person, so much so that I felt it in such a profound way that I started crying. I was so, you know, mad at myself for thinking that I couldn't help this person or that he was beyond help somehow, right? He totally proved me wrong, and not only that, so I tried to tell him that. And he's like, oh, I don't really feel that different. I said, no, I said, you don't understand. Like, I don't really get choked up when I talk to my clients, and I really feel the difference. And he goes, um, he's like, well, you know, he goes, my brother actually said something to my girlfriend. He said, I seem really different. I said, there's your, there's your metric. There's your proof and evidence, right? Your brother who's known you your whole life noticed that you're a different. So I don't know if that totally answers no, your question. No, it does, absolutely. But I think that was someone that I thought, I can't help this person. Mm -hmm. Or there was too much of a disconnect. But when you do the work, it works, you know? So, um, yeah, so that's just like a beautiful thing that just happened to me recently. That's, it's, it's you know, I learned a lesson from that. That gentleman there. Oh, yeah, sorry. I have a question. I'm curious if... <clears throat> If you identify what you love and how you authentically want to behave around other people or in a work setting or what have you, what do you say to someone when that thing that you thought you loved starts to feel like a job and some of the possible negative thoughts or stresses that come with that? How do you advise people? It's the 80-20 rule. Yeah. And, and also sometimes there are seasons. So sometimes that's what you loved at one point, and it's okay. It's ran its course, you're not interested in that, now it's time to sort of evolve into something different. So again, knowing yourself, you should be able to access to know which is right. Is it just something like I gotta just re-alter re, uh, my perspective, perspective about it and just sort of understand, okay, this is still great, it's becoming tough. But guess what, in a sense, that if you don't wanna make a change, and it's something that you still love, it frees up some mental psychic energy for you to focus on something else, right? So if you are sort of so good at what you do and you're still, you know, it sort of is becoming a little rote, that could also be an indication to focus on something else. Maybe it's focusing on exercise. Maybe it's focusing on relationships. Maybe it's learning how to cook or, you know, doing something else to help counterbalance and mitigate a little bit of the boredom. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any other 
So, um, so yeah, so um, I, I've got two great quotes that I love. The one I have on the board, um, wait, let's board it up and get it up. Yeah, so, um, right, so the confidence is about really trusting yourself. So when you know yourself, you want to trust yourself. And, and here's what happens, and also to the question in the back, you know, sometimes when you do this work and you kind of figure out, oh, this is who I am, this is, this is what I'm interested in, it could be radically different from what you have been, or what your family is like, or what your peer group is like, and for you to actually be yourself, it could be, it could be, um, you know, it could be a little scary. Um, but again, you've got to just trust that. You know, you've got to just trust that. And if the people who are around you don't like you expressing who you are, then those people probably shouldn't have been in your life anyway. Or at least the amount of time and energy that you spend with them shouldn't have been um, that way. Um, you know, and it's like, if you don't, if you think about this, if you don't like yourself, like, why would you want to be yourself, <laughs> right? So you want to make sure that, you know, you create, you're, you've got to live with yourself. You have to live with yourself. Not your mother, not your husband, not your, you know, your friend or whatever. You have to live in your own body, with your own breath and your own heartbeat and your own time and energy. So you've got to do whatever you can do to make yourself the way you want to be and the way that you feel good about and the, one, the way that feels natural to you. Because, you know, it's better to live your own destiny imperfectly, because this is not about perfection, this is all a growth, evolution, journey, right, it could be a whole lifetime, than to live an imitation of someone's life with perfection. So whether that's you're trying to imitate someone that you see on social media or celebrity, you're trying to be like X, Y, Z, or you're trying to live up to some expectation that your parents or society or whoever has on you. Right, just be yourself imperfectly. It's better than trying to be something that you're, that you're not. Right? All you can come down to that. So, and then there's also another great um, thing that um, this was a couple of years ago, and I was watching Conan and uh, Deepak Chopra. You guys know Deepak Chopra. He came on Conan as a guest, and um, he was like, Deepak Chopra was just in Las Vegas, and so Conan's like, Oh, I hear you were in Las Vegas, and how was it? <laughs> you know, Deepak in his very Deepak way, which I'm terrible at the accent. He's like, Oh, he goes. I was like, oh, you know, is it crazy? And then he goes, no, oh, no, no. He's like, Las Vegas, he's like, it's the most spiritual place on the planet. And Conan's like, haha, you know, that's really funny. That's Everybody funny. laughs. He goes, no. He goes, he goes, it does not pretend to be anything that it's not. <laughs> it does not pretend to be anything that it's not. So think about that. Um, so yeah, so I think that, um, is there anything else that, that you guys came with today that I haven't answered or addressed? Any other questions that you were burning that I didn't answer? Or, so that's good. Um, so yeah, so it's really about having courage. Like I think what our world needs now is love. <coughs> But you have to remember that um, courage, right, the root, the root of the word courage is core, which is Latin for heart. So the more that you can love yourself, you can love others, you can have the courage to express yourself and be who you are. It's always going to come down to love. I know that sounds very woo-woo or whatever, but it is the most powerful force in the universe. And my experience with that guy the other day is because what I realized is that I don't think he had anyone ever pay attention to him and give him presents. I mean, clearly he was a client, he was paying me, but I'm very good at what I do and I love my work and I love my clients and I think that comes through. And I think that um, it's such a powerful thing that people feel and that, that can transform people in ways that, that you can't even imagine, especially those people who feel a little disconnected, lonely, isolated, marginalized, which, not necessarily the people who you think they are. This dude was working at some fancy schmancy firm making a six-figure salary, okay? So it could be anyone, 
that, um, you know, that just hasn't had someone say, oh, hi, I see you. Oh, hey, I care about you. Oh, wow, you're really great at that. You know, but, but it's, it's really, it's like if we can't do that for ourselves, it's going to be really hard to do it for someone else. So, so it really all comes down to that for me. Um, and I'm actually finishing my time, so that's exciting. So, oh, I know. So, um, so two things, well, three things. Those who came in late, if you haven't already signed up to be on my mailing list, please make sure you do that. I have two clipboards here. Um, as well as this little handy dandy texting situation, which I hope at least one person tried to see if it worked. Um, and then I want you guys to think about, um, oh yeah, and then obviously, I always forget to do this, I'm a coach, I'm happy to work with you all. Um, so if you need help, if you need an outside brain to help you identify what some of your strengths and your weaknesses are and help you, give you the support and guidance and, and love, frankly, to be who you are, um, I'd be happy to do that with you one-on-one. -on -one. I also do group coaching. So the next group coaching is March 6th, 6 to 8. You got RSVP. That's why you need to be on my mailing list because I, uh, it's generally the first Tuesday of every month. Um, if you sign up to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be happy to offer you some discounts if you sign up today. We can talk about that separately. Um, don't forget about my book. And there's some materials here and on the table outside. But what I really want you to do is think about what do you not, like you're going to go back out into your life and we have some like a nice little bubble here that we created, right? So you go back out into the real world. And I want you to think about what are the things, the one or two or three top things that you really, really want to remember, that you really don't want to forget, that you really want to hold on to and take with you going forward. Think about what that is. And I, I always think about little doodads, little tokens to help you remind, to remind yourself of it. And there will be pieces of money because I want you to remember when you be who you are, prosperity follows. Okay? So um, if you take one, take one and pass it out, don't fish around. It doesn't matter what the amount is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because remember, you can have a million five dollar bills or one one hundred dollar bill. Okay? <laughs> so um, thank you so much. I I don't know when I'm gonna be back here, but I'm usually back here in the summer or something. So check my website, check my uh, information, check the web check the uh, library website, and I'm happy to help support you guys in whatever way I can. Thank you so much for your attention, and have a great night. Thank you.